talking, I'm starting my video, bro. Is that right? Mm. No one cares about your, your, your business, get me? Yeah, careful, it's careful. The pitch! What's the pitch doing? <laughs> On day! Oh, God, I'm cruising. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Yes guys, what is going on and welcome back to another video. In this video, I've got my good friend Carl's lovely BMW x 3 competition and we're going to be going out for a drive and I'm going to give you my first impressions, what I think of this sport or super sport SUV. And here we have it, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Defined. How are you doing, my bro? Not too bad, man. It's been a while. It has, to it, see has, you again. it has. I think the last video we've done was the stage one. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, we are potentially going to be getting an intercooler. Mm, and obviously, some, some, some cheeky bits on the way. A little cheeky bits. <laughs> but as you know, mate, how are you doing and how is the car doing anyway? Um, yeah, I mean, this was always a dream car for me. Yeah. You know? It worked out to be the right difference between performance and size. And I know you quite well, and I do know that you were <laughs> interested in getting a van for the work and obviously yeah. getting a like a sportier car, but you decided, even though this is a van, it's some <laughs> sort of a white van and that. But yeah, so this is definitely ticking a box for you right now, yeah? I mean, for me, it does it all. It's got space, it's got speed, and the spec and color, I couldn't, I couldn't yeah, pass it down. Yeah, it's a no-brainer. It looks absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. But yeah, it is threatening to rain. Didn't you say you've got to pick somebody up as well for this, because you've got a, you're going oh. out with some after yes we have a we have a special a special uh special guest who, who may be here soon so, okay yeah. cool so yeah <laughs> guys as you can see it is threatening to rain but again this is x drive so we're probably going to be all right but yeah enough talking let's go out straight for this drive no, i wasn't i was then i just put it off but look this is my all right no talking i'm starting my video bro is that right mm. no one cares about your your, your business get me okay Put your phone on silent, yes, please. Man. Cheers, mate. No problem. <laughs> Let me just mute my thing. <laughs> so, yes, guys, what is going on? And welcome back to another video. As we said earlier, we've managed to pick up the man, the myth, the legend, which is Rick. Guys, if you don't know about Rick, go and check him out. D12RGM on Instagram and Rick Tech. Whether it's Lauren Springs, uh, anything car related, he can fix, he can make, he can do. So yeah, he normally comes in a pair. There's normally another guy called Ash the Hobo who we haven't got on camera, but we will get at some point. But yeah, the three of us are going out in this car because I class this car anyway as the ultimate road trip mile crunching car. It isn't probably going to be as efficient as a diesel, <laughs> which I think it probably sounds like. I don't know, Carl, how does it sound? Does uh, it, does it, got know, it sounds pretty good to me. It's not bad, it's not bad. It's, it's not like, bad. Just turn the volume down. Be you turn the volume down on the speakers quickly. Just for, for an opiate so car. Turn the volume up on the speakers. <laughs> yeah, please, we'll get some ad on the way as well. <laughs> All right, but yeah, Carl, talk to me. Previous cars, what have you had? Um, so as you mentioned, I bought a caddy van before I had this. So no, 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 give me from oh, scratch. From, from scratch, scratch. Okay, from, from day one. I want to know about the Opel Astra. Okay, so I had a limited edition Corsa. Okay. So black one, 15 plate. That was my very first car. Mm -hmm. um, standard, uh, you know, boy racer car. That, mm -hmm. that was what sort of founded my love for cars. Then after that, I moved on to a uh, 118D. So I had a white 118D one series, mm -hmm. uh, M Sport. That was my first entry level BMW. And this is where I sort of found my passion for coding and playing around with stuff and you know, all the other bits. Um, from then I had a 125D, um, which was like a small upgrade. Then I bought 140, which is where I met you and I met Rick and that was where the sort of the modification journey began. And then yeah, it's sort of been history. Okay. I bought the caddy van after that. I was gonna say, the caddy, yeah, the caddy van that lasted two months so that no one ever saw. <laughs> those of you that know me enough would know that Carl's a very, very close friend of mine. And I see him probably what, once a month sometimes, yeah, at yeah. least once a month. I didn't even see the caddy. It literally came and left in a matter of, that's one of those decisions that you're just like, yeah, you know, why did I buy this t-shirt? Why did I buy these trainers? I don't even wear them sort of thing, right? Yeah, for a work van, awesome. They're amazing. And I managed to get a, a two liter diesel or my, you know, it was lovely. It was on lower and springs, had nice wheels on it, had coilovers in the front. It just went a bit of me. I'm a car guy, you know. Needed a a it. van worked for me. And if I was gonna drive to see clients in a car, or better to pull up in something like this. Or, so you, you know, went from that van to this van? Yeah, went from <laughs> one transit to another, basically. <laughs> cool, so why the X3M competition? Uh, I mean, I get this question a lot, especially from clients who own like M2s and people yourself, and obviously mm. Rick, you know, being a big M140 owner. Um, for me, it did it all, you know. It's not, don't get me wrong, it doesn't handle amazingly, but it does, I feel everything at, as a small SUV does very well. You know, it can go around the corner, it can go fast in a straight line, and you can fit kids, dogs, whatever you want in the boot, not that I would ever have that in the 
Yes, but you know, <laughs> it, it does it all for me. It ticks all the boxes and I didn't want a big SUV. I didn't want an X5 or an X6. I wanted something I could still drive and get to grips with and not feel like I'm actually driving alone. Like he's playing chicken. <laughs> so back to what we were saying. Mm. How long have you owned this for then? Uh, I've had it since March. So March. Not very long. Okay, so about three, four, four months. Four yeah, months. Yeah, okay, yeah. so enough to give like your honest opinions of it at least. Yeah, I've driven a lot. I did my thousand miles to do my running service sure. quite quickly just because I wanted to be able to drive a car properly and not have to worry about you know restrictions 100%. and other parts of like that. So yeah, I mean personally, I love it. You know, I described to you earlier the same problem works for frame owners have in second gear. It does a weird. It thing does hang on to it. It holds on to it even yeah. if you're not trying to drive fast, which sure. is a little bit frustrating. But yeah. Sure. And Rick, what do you think in terms of comfort? How does it feel? It's all right. It's a, it's a little bit stiff in the back. That's what I was going to say. But it then, what M cover isn't? So. Yeah. So that's that's one thing I was going to say. What do you think, Carl? Anyway. I mean, you know I've had a few loan cars in between having this car, yeah. including like X6 and X5s with the mag ride. They feel like limousines compared yeah. to this. But, it's quite you know, crashy. It is quite crashy, but this is meant to, you know, it's meant to have a stiff um, suspension. It is an yeah. M car, you know, at the end of the day, so. 100%. It's a twin turbo. This is a twin gigs. So what, what is it anyway? So it's, it's a, a S58. S58. Twin twin turbo. Yep. I think it's twin scroll. Correct. Am I am I wrong, Rick? Uh, I think you're the no, edge it's especially. Twin scroll because it's twin turbo. Oh, twin okay, turbo. Twin yeah. Turbo. Okay. And with and with this, what is it? Five hundred brakes, something like that. They say they say five hundred. 10 or 20 but I know that a few that have been mapped recently have done a bit more than that you know done a sort of 520 530 aerial it's very it feels very smooth it is I think my favorite thing about it is it does it all you know mm. it's got the comfortability you can put your foot down it's not really slow to react and I love the ZF yeah you know, anyone who's driven a DC T car it feels amazing the mm. shift speeds are you know quick but the mm. ZF just does it all for me it has the comfortability there's no kangaroo in, and obviously the beauty in this car is I've got the the, the gear selector as in how fast I want the shifts. Diversity, to yeah, 100%. yeah. So, so in terms of efficiency, anyway, I'm always touching this. I know it's a petrol. <laughs> I know, I know. But I always <laughs> like to know this. From someone out there is going to be like, okay, like. Mm, the, what could you do on a tank? So have you done uh, any long journeys with this before? Yeah, yeah. So I've driven up to Yorkshire when I went up okay. to pick it up. And how many recently. miles is that roughly? About 300, I think it was about 340 or 50 One tank? or so. One tank, yeah. I got, home, I got home with a tank of fuel and a little bit left. And so to be you, fair, you got you made it there and back on one no, tank? No, no, I okay, wish. what you're trying to say. Oh, no, no, just, just, just back. <laughs> just, okay. just back in one tank. But and to be fair, I didn't really drive it very casually. So, okay. so maybe if capable. I, yeah, yeah, I think it could probably do like a push, maybe like 420 miles. you were miles. doing like 40 on the motor. Yeah, yeah, there, definitely. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes 35, just extra slow, you know. <laughs> so practicality wise, like we said, you've got Rick who's about six foot four in the back. We're yeah. totally anyway. Six three in a bit. It's six three in a bit. So there we go. He's, he's in the back. How's headspace? I've got loads. It's, it's good. This is. Oh, I don't know. If I set up properly, <laughs> just yeah, right. <laughs> it's like scratching. <laughs> we couldn't wear helmets in this My garden. My usual seating position is. Okay. okay. All right. So it is practical, and like we said earlier, you said you can throw kids, dogs, you name it in the back. Not that you would, obviously, because this guy, like I said on camera earlier, guys, when it comes to perfectionist, this is this this is. Are you are you trying to do what I do? You trying to squeeze in it? <laughs> no, no, trying to give me a little squeeze. I'm seeing right foot. I'm seeing right foot. Put your little Michael Jackson foot down there. We've we've been, you know, me and Rick have been talking about whether it's worth lowering these cars, and mm. you know, there is a lot of discussions online about you know the bounciness the fact that it skips you know we've spoken about it's a heavy car let's, let's be realistic right it's two tons mm. so taking it around a bend it's never going to handle like a car sure don't worry putting it like on the mss and i backs and hrs yeah they might you know aid the visual appearance of the car but for me you know i'm not sure whether it's really going to solve the the problems i have but it's not really meant to be driven that way as well yeah so, i get you you know um yeah it's definitely going to have big mod free as you know mm -hmm. i mean they're the, the sticky situation of having a locked DME. So yeah. when they become, you know, when someone kind of lock them and crack them, you know, it'll Definitely give people mapped it. and they say about 620, 610 okay. off a of stage one, which is. Do you feel it's underpowered? 
No, it, does, it definitely doesn't feel yeah. like that. But you know, on a couple of drives we've been on, yeah. there's not much in between it of compared not. to your car. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. And Rick, what do you think in terms of being the Mister Modification Man? What would you do if this was yours? So. I spent the day yesterday with Tommy, who's got a really nice black X3. Yes, yes. And he's loaded on army bags, spacers, and that just looks. It looks perfect, really nice. It? That's one thing I was going to say. When I pulled up and I was doing a few of the tracking shots, I did look and I was like, there is a lot of arch gap there. There is a lot. <laughs> like, I literally put my head it in there to clean it out. <laughs> it is, yes. That's a fair. Yeah, just call me Tom, it's fine. Yeah, that's fine. So you only know me like two, three years, it's cool. Yeah, just call me Tom. <laughs> Probably say regardless of the new, the new, I like the interior because okay. like, yeah, I mean the does. seats are nice, the steering wheel like I do, it's I not a horrible place to be in. Don't get me wrong. Piano black? You you happy with the piano black? Oh well, this is the issue. This this car is quite has quite a unique spec. <laughs> it has everything but the carbon pack. So <laughs> you know it's, it's wins and losses. I've got the two and H brakes, which are the big red yeah, brakes, which are quite nice. So yeah, I mean me, I like the exterior of the car. I think it looks mean. It's the right difference between a you know a standard M Sport car and an M car. Like it yeah. has a bit of road presence to it. I've always said I like this sort of size of SUV. Yeah. So if I was going to change, I'd probably want to go for like a Macan GTS or something. If I wasn't staying within the BMW brand, yeah. Obviously, with what I do, it makes sense for me too. So the only natural progression path would be for me to get like if I'm staying in the four x four life, it would be um, you know an X5M. X5M. And yeah. you, but you, and you, but you said you weren't too keen. I don't really like the size though. Again, so that's why I would be tempted to go down to like a Porsche or something, just okay. because quality is there. Yeah. You know driver experience it's kind of there if you get the gts cars they're quite nice they sound nice they look nice sure they're very refined but it's kind of against what i do at the moment if that makes sense yeah, yeah, but i'm a car guy you know everyone who knows me i like cars you know it, yes i do deal with bmws but in all you know i don't have any discrepancies i like all kinds of cars so all right so now we're out in the car and driving it originally <laughs> yeah, let's see. It's all right. It's all right. For me, it doesn't feel punchy. It doesn't feel punchy. Let's drop it into second gear. We're at about what? Four, four up here. Four, four k. Yeah, it does. It feels all right. But I think you know what it is with with these cars, and especially because I've come from this Audi day quite recently. Mm -hmm. With there not being that much of an exhaust note. Yeah. You kind of lose track of how fast it's actually going. Like you look down and you're like, right, you're actually going quick. Yeah. say no because what do you think like on the weekend this isn't the car you'd want to take out oh no 100 it's, it's not, a, it's it's not this, that this, car this is, this is a car you'd want to do business miles in potentially i know it's going to be a bit expensive on fuel but this is a car you'd rather do business miles in knowing that you've got something that's comfortable mm -hmm. like fit hugging to a degree mm -hmm. and something that can get you those miles eaten up a lot quicker than anything else if you needed to for me it's the happy medium you can take it on a long journey and it'll put a smile on your face yeah you know what i mean you, you get to you know put your foot down and enjoy some of the speed and what it offers and then you can put it back into normal and just cruise around in it yeah and with the suspension like so if i press uh, how do i go back to comfort car just uh, if you press the left m1 so now we're in comfort now so it is a bit softer yeah i don't know what do you think rick can you notice anything it was really stiff in mdm yeah So many like diesel cars can do that if you get a, not i've always said this is a 40d but you could get a 40d that could do the same thing but yeah. i think with an exhaust mod yeah. this would be definitely like again let's go back into that m2 mode and put it in drive yeah so this this wouldn't it the, the, the diesel wouldn't give you this this is what you pay for it feels very m140 like in the back really well this 
this is what I said to yeah, Tim. In terms of driving experience, it feels um, like a big M140. Yeah, that is that is. This yeah. is how I've described it. B58. So the power delivery is going to be quite similar, isn't exactly it? Exactly that. Yeah. yeah. By the time you have the weighting of the car, it is really similar to a B58. But anyways, guys, we're running quite low. We are quite like, literally on fumes right now. So as usual, guys, make sure you hit up both of these lovely gentlemen. <laughs> these are like my brothers anyway. So that's Kyle Define Code on Instagram, Rick D12 RJM on Instagram as well. Hit them up, get in contact with them. I guarantee you're not going to find anyone better when it comes to coding or anyone better when it comes to retrofits to your car, whether it's hardware or software, hit these two up. But yes, guys, as usual, I hope you're having a great weekend and I'll see you in the next one. God bless.